It's a three-year doctoral program, so it's basically like four years crammed into one, or into three. And uh, you know, I'm in class every day. There's a lot of um, extra work you know, outside of class. It's a lot different than undergrad, where you can just go to class, study a little bit, take the test, you'll be okay. Everything builds on each other, on itself here. So, you know, it's a lot more intense with school. I usually get home from the gym, eat dinner, sit on the couch, headphones in, studying. Um, I have a very unique situation. My partner is a physical therapist. So it's very helpful for me when I have questions, I just kind of turn my head and say, hey, can you answer this for me? So, and most of my other classmates don't have that resource. So it, it is nice and it does, does have its benefits. Hey, Kelly, it's Ian. Good. Um, so there's actually a CrossFit Beaumont, like right off the highway. Okay. All right. Of course I don't answer their phone. Never, never answer their phone. No cross affiliate ever answers their phone. Let's just set the scene here for a second. Okay. So what what's actually going on right now? We're at, we're at, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> we're, at, we're at CrossFit Beaumont in totally. Beaumont, Texas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're kind of crossing paths. I just went and visited the first boxer where I started for the weekend, and then I'm headed back home. Just kind of a random. <laughs> Get together. <laughs> so you've never been here. I've never been here before. We no. Know where we are. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. I was here one time. I ran the torch through here. Wait, what? What? The 2002 Olympic torch relay. I ran in Beaumont. That's the only time I've ever Wait, been you, here. Wait, you held the Olympic torch? Yeah. Really? I ran with it. Yeah. That's crazy. It was awesome. Whoa. What, yeah. What? Like, why did you get picked to do that? Um, in the 2002 Olympics, they had like a kind of like a contest. Coke and Chevrolet were looking for like inspirational people, and someone nominated me to carry the torch. Wow. So I got chosen. That's, That's the only other time I've been here. How long did you carry it? Um, super long. It was like a tenth of a mile. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, it wasn't that long. But that's pretty cool. You, I mean, you got to hold the Olympic torch. Yeah, I actually got to keep it too. You have it? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, it's at my, well, it's at my parents' house. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. For me, I'm, I'm good with the heavy stuff. Uh, and anytime it, the harder it gets, the more awkward and spider monkeyish, the, the better. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> like they call me the spider monkey because I can do just the odd skills. Like he had me pick up a barbell and do a one-arm overhead pistol just to see if I could do it. And you know, just awkward stuff that you other. Did. Yeah. <laughs> I was six months in and I got 14th at regionals. And after that, it was just, I was doing the gym's workouts, nothing structurally planned. I think we did do a 5-3-1 sometime in the fall before the Open that year. And at, at the beginning of the Open, I thought I might do well. And then the first few events, I was pretty, uh, wasn't doing that great. I was, was maybe thinking of going team. And then I kept getting better and better and ended up winning the Open that year. So that's when I decided to go individual. And that's around the time I hooked up with Rudy, which was a little late, right before regionals, like four weeks to go to really get as much out of it. But I thought maybe I had a shot then. That was close, but <laughs> no cigar. Because I was so close last year, and it was always a goal, but never, I didn't realize that it was such a uh, realistic goal. And when I went, and I watched him actually last year, I wasn't going to, I thought it would piss me off, but I wanted to see it anyway. And uh, it was it was an awesome experience to watch them competing, and I just decided then I wanted a shot at that. Why are you a super inspirational person? Well, it was, um, it was after the time that I had cancer, and. Uh, went through all the treatment and continued on with gymnastics and so when 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 did you have cancer um in 2000 2000 mm -hmm. and what was the what was it it was a malignant sarcoma tumor on my shoulder um had some treatment took it out continued on <laughs> so uh like what was it was it bad like what did you what did you have to do to for the treatment um, I did five weeks of radiation treatment and then just to make sure that there was enough margin when they did surgery to take it out, that was sufficient for me. So 
everything was good after that. And that's the scar on your shoulder. Mm hmm. And what were you saying earlier? Like, does I mean, does it does it the does it affect your performance? Um, it's a little weaker on some movements, like shoulder press and stuff like that. But they took out some of my deltoid, so random movements just don't work as well as the other shoulder. <laughs> so. What about handstand pushups? Well, the gymnastics background that I have helps out with that. Makes that um, not as much of a weakness. I've been doing a lot more endurance. Um, Steve, the owner here, he uh, brought a rower over to my garage, so I can I can do that. He, he definitely made a point to bring that over for me. Um, so I've been doing a lot more endurance stuff, a lot more running. That's definitely my weakness, and I know it, it always has been. So. Um, you know, after every workout, I'm trying to get in maybe a 2K row or some rowing intervals or some running intervals, something to, to get that endurance up. Um, you know, just more volume. Everything is heavier, so I've been trying to uh, do like kind of a little bit of a strength program um, to get as much strength as I can get. And you know, I have I had nine weeks. You know, now we have like three left, so I'm trying to get some strength, but it's it's really hard to do and that short amount of time, but um, I think just by doing the heavier Metcons and really feeling what heavy loads feel like, it's going to help when we, we get out there. Um, How much of that like programming and what you're doing is uh, a reaction to what you learned at last year's regional and last year's games? A lot. Um, last year I did not finish the killer cage workout, which sucked because I loved monkey bars and I had a really good time in the cage, just not all the stuff before it. and. Um, I was really upset at myself. I couldn't squat 155 for three sets of seven. And um, actually, just last week, I was squatting and I did 165 for a set of 10. So I'm like, I'm very happy with that. That was one of those things that really just kind of broke my heart that I couldn't do it. And I, you know, I wasn't disappointed in myself. I gave it everything I had. But uh, you know, this year I don't want that. I don't want to fail at a workout. If I don't make it to Sunday because everyone else is just that much better and that I didn't get the finish, you know. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I just got beat, then that's okay. But I don't want to, I don't want to ever uh, get, like, I don't know what the word is, uh, I don't want to fail at the workout. I want to be able to do it, whether I get last place because I just finished in the time cap or, or not, then, then that's okay with me. I just don't want to not, I just don't want to fail at a workout again. That was hard. I usually try to just get one session. I don't really have much time to be at the gym twice a day or for a long, long time. So try to be as efficient as possible and get it in and get it done. Yeah. Um, so did you go to the regional like expecting to qualify? No, <laughs> not at all. Um, my goal for the year was to be top 60 in the Open just to get a shot to compete at regionals. Um, when the regional wads came out, I was pretty excited. I like heavy and I like skill. Um, and I just wanted to be consistent. I knew it was a long weekend and if I stayed pretty consistent throughout the weekend, I could do well. So that was my goal. Most of the time, the whole year, it was pretty much um, five days on, maybe I'd do six with an active recovery. And the workouts took me about two, two and a half hours because I don't like to rush too much. There's like two lifts and a wad and then some extra uh, midline stuff afterwards. Just what's on the blog for Rudy. And now we're, this is the first time I've loaded all year. I really didn't load like this for regionals at all. And been doing some two, two a days a week. Today is uh, a heavy day. It's bigger than my normal days in the off season. So two of those a week, two active recoveries and then one lighter day. But it's, it's still a good, I'd say a third more, maybe twice, <laughs> another half what I've been doing, you know. Right. So is competing in CrossFit at all similar to like gymnastics or heptathlon? Gee, 
the gymnastics and heptathlon are very different. I think for gymnastics, it's all about controlled explosions. You just want you do the routines over and over and over and over. You don't want to do anything special. You want to go in and hit a beam routine just like you hit it in the gym. But it's it's more about controlling your nerves than anything. Just doing it the same. And with CrossFit, you don't want to go in and do Fran the way you did it every single day in the gym because it's, it's the same with track. You don't you want to PR. You want to do bigger and better. And nerves are actually a good thing to an extent. I don't have any expectations. I don't think you should going into it because you don't know what's going to happen. And I think that <clears throat> last year was kind of good because I was new and I didn't have any expectations then. But kind of having a sense of like what, what the games are all about, I don't think you should have expectations. I think you should set a goal for yourself, which I'd like to finish. I'd like to finish on the top 15, and I'd, just, I'd really like to make it to day three, you know, which is the top 20, I think they took the top 24, 25, something like that, and I was really close. Um, so I'd love to, you know, to make it in the top 15 or at least get to, get to Sunday. It was hard to watch in the stands when you're like two spots away from making it. So that's, that's my goal. But I do not have any expectations, you know. I want to have fun and, and really enjoy myself a little more this year than last year. I think I was a little stressed out. It was new. I was like starstruck by seeing, you know, Chris Clever and Andy Thoris' daughter. I'm like standing there like a newbie. But, you know, this year now that I you know, feel a little more established and as, my, like, as an athlete in CrossFit, I think I'll have a lot more fun with it and uh, hopefully be able to meet my goals. So is it weird that it seems like people will know who you are and, and they'll be like looking at you to do really well and things like that? Do you think about that? Yeah, it is weird. I, uh, I was up at, I qualified for the Olympic weightlifting nationals this year and I was up at the Arnold and they had, they were doing the snatch ladder, or not snatch ladder, but the snatch workout for the Open then too, Dan Bailey and Rich Vonning and all them and EA. And I met Dan Bailey and he came up and he was like, he introduced himself to me and I was like, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> and he said, yeah, I've seen some of your videos, da da da. And I thought, you've seen my videos? <laughs> You're Dan Bailey. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was that was eye opening. <laughs> well that's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that Dan Bailey is a, is a fan of yours though. <laughs> CrossFit Beaumont, whoever you are, thanks for letting us use your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Hope to meet you guys sometime. Yeah, maybe sometime, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you.